Am I on? Good morning. Good morning. And, uh, happy Sabbath, everyone. If Good I morning. can. Happy Sabbath. If I can just share my screen. Okay. Uh, let us first listen to this short song. What a great surrender song, right? It must be hard to uh, compose a song. I tried to write a song before, but it's hard because I think you gotta know the melody at the same time. And I really envy people who are musically inclined. I envy you, Arjen, uh, one man band. I used to be able to play guitar, but I lost my fingers. I tried to learn playing with the right, it's hard. So I really, I'm really jealous of people who are good in music. But as much as how beautiful this song is, I kind of, I beg to differ that Jesus can take over the uh, steering wheel in our lives. So when, when God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. We were created in the likeness of the infinite creator, God of love, who is living, intelligent being with individuality and ability to reason, discern, decide and act and God created us with a power modeled after one of his, the power to think, the power to reason, comprehend, and choose. It is this power that gives us the foundation to love, for love operates only in an atmosphere of freedom. Robots cannot love, computers cannot love, puppets cannot love without our own individuality, without our own ability to think independently and choose freely, we cannot love. We are created as free thinking beings with the ability to choose God or against him, to choose love or against love. And God will not use his power to actively destroy his image in us. Even if people sincerely pray to him and ask him to do so, while you may have never heard someone pray, Lord, please destroy your image in me. But you have likely heard other prayers that if God were to grant what was asked of him would result in the image of God being destroyed in that person. They pray something like this. Father, you take control. I surrender my mind to you. I don't want to decide anymore. Father, I just keep messing up. So I give the over, I give over the driver's seat of my life to you for you to be in control of what I do. You tell me the answer, you decide for me and I, I will do it, no questions asked. I don't wanna do it wrong, so you take control. Jesus, take the wheel, just like the song. If God were to grant this request, what would happen to the person? What would happen to the image of God in them? They would become robots, puppets, programmed beings in which God chose for them. Thus their individuality would be erased and their capacity to love destroyed. God will never do this. The Bible said, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. Even if you ask of God to do whatever it takes, what does it mean to surrender? When we surrender ourselves to God, it is never for him to control our power of choice. That power is a gift from God that we are to exercise. We have to trust first 
so we can let him live in our hearts. Distrust was the very first cause of sin. So the answer is trust. John 3, 16, we all know that. We surrender our hearts, motives, desires, and plans to give for cleansing and renewal in righteousness. We are to surrender our sin, sickness for healing, our guilt for removing, our shame for cleansing. We are to open ourselves up for the rejuvenating power of the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit enters our hearts and minds, He enlightens with truth, inspires with love, convicts of what is wrong, and impresses with better motives. But He never chooses for us. The Spirit always leaves us free to say yes or no. And when the Spirit has His way, when we say yes to all that God will do in us, we develop certain traits of character that the Bible calls fruits. And the last fruit of the Holy Spirit restore, when the Spirit restores God's image in us is God control. No, folks, it's not God control. I just tricked it. It's self-control, self-governance. God restores within us the ability to think clearly, discern wisely, and act righteously. The Bible tells us that the mature are those who have developed by practice the ability to discern the right from wrong, Hebrews 5.14. God wants us to be mature, to grow, to understand, to comprehend, to do what is right because it is right. Because we understand and agree with him and choose it not merely because he has said to do it, but because we actually prefer it and freely want it. However, God is not the only supernatural being who is working to have his image reproduced in humanity. Satan is also working to reproduce his image in us. And this is the real focus in ultimate outcome of the war between Christ and Satan, who we become like. The war between Christ and Satan is a war for hearts and minds. These two beings, Christ and Satan, stand at the head of two divergent systems, two antagonistic kingdoms, two opposing governments that oppose in diametrically opposite ways. Every intelligent being in the universe decides on whose side they will be by the methods, principles, the laws they prefer and choose to practice in their life. It is by our choices in whom we trust and whose methods we choose to employ in how we live and treat others that determines whose kingdom we become members of. Do we prefer truth or deception? Do we prefer love or fear and selfishness? Do we prefer freedom or coercion, force, and control? It is a law, the law of worship. By beholding, we become changed. If we worship a God that is like Satan in character, one who makes up rules and uses threats, intimidation, and inflicted punishment to coerce and control, and calls it justice, then we become like that God and will use those methods upon others. But if we worship Jesus, who would not use his power to punish his crucifiers, but left his creatures free to reject and kill him, then we become like Jesus, present the truth in love and leave others free. We live out the principles of God, cooperating with the Holy Spirit to have his law written in our hearts. We are being washed, purified, and prepared by Jesus Christ to be a temple for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, or we are being corrupted and turned into what the Bible calls synagogue of Satan. Every intelligent being, angels and humans, are created to be living temples in which God dwells by his spirit. It is Satan's goal to displace God from the throne of our hearts and minds to establish himself as the ruler of our being. He does this by getting us to choose his methods, principles, and laws over God's. Even while we claim to be worshiping God or Jesus, Satan does this by getting us to have faith in the wrong God, the wrong methods, and the wrong type of law. And, he, and to prefer the God who is like dictator. Remember, the Jews in Christ's day claimed that both 
Abraham and God as fathers, both were told directly by Jesus that they belong to their father, the devil. Yet they were certain that they were obeying scripture and that it was Jesus who was teaching heresy. They were not hostile toward Jesus because they didn't believe in God and in Jesus. They were hostile toward Jesus because he presented a different God to the one they believed in. Calling oneself a Christian, a follower of God, even follower of Jesus, does not establish one as temple of God. What does? Worshiping God in truth, as Jesus revealed him to be in character, principle, and method, and thereby surrendering in trust to the true God of love and having his law written in our hearts. The operating system upon which we live, breathe, and function restored into the heart, meaning we love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, and soul, and strength, and our neighbors, including our enemies as ourselves. Remember the sermon last week, Dirk Williams, who was condemned to death to be burned at the stake, but escaped and being chased running on thin ice, his captor fell into icy waters and turned around to save him. In doing that, he was caught by others chasing him, and he was burned alive afterwards. What a love. That is a Christ-like love. What if someone gossiped about you? Would you retaliate and post on social media? If someone slaps you, are you so quick to slap back? Would you be carrying this in your Bible? One core message of the cross is non-retaliatory. Jesus could have called legion of angels to save him, but he did not. We don't live uh, victoriously in our strength. The strength is God's. The choice is ours. When we are changed and saved, we will be like this. We will have salvage written in our records in heaven, just like a wrecked car, when it is salvaged, when it is healed back, when it is fixed, that's what it is. Salvage, saved, healed. After all the saving power comes from God, the truth that displaces the lies and wins us to trust comes from God. The love that drives out fear comes from God. But the choice to respond to the truth and love of God is ours. When we make the choice to trust God and open our hearts to him, he enters the sanctuary of our souls with his healing and cleansing presence and removes guilt, takes away the shame and purges corruption. He imbues us with new motives, new desires, new longings for purity, goodness, love, kindness, and honesty. As we identify these new motives and choose to apply them into our daily activities, decisions, and practices, we receive power to carry out those choices, but we don't receive the power to overcome until we make the choice to overcome. The power is God's and the choice is ours. That is our power, our effort in our salvation, in our healing. When we have moments of weakness and don't do what our renewed heart desires, but instead allow an old habit to control, or allow a situation to irritate us in an impulsive act that we regret like Moses striking the rock. We are not cast off by God. I once had a, a conversation with my uncle about salvation that he said, we cannot enter heaven as long as we have one sin in our hearts. And I asked him, suppose you had an argument with your wife and you forgot to ask for forgiveness. You went to bed angry and you didn't wake up suppose that happens would you lose your salvation and he said yes what kind of a god we serve if god is like that we are not fully uh, saved yet we are not in our, our glorious bodies yet so sometimes we commit we fall we commit sin we stumble and fall the Bible says, 
Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. We have to study for our own. When we grieve in our hearts and go humbly to God, regretting our weakness and love, longing to his strength, and we receive God's forgiveness, grace, acceptance, love, and reassurance that he is not done with us yet. And we arise stronger in our connection with God, equipped and empowered to succeed. He looks at the condition of our hearts, not our behavior. The Bible says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is God's plan, God's desire, God's intention to restore his image within you and me, but we must choose to trust him and follow where he leads. Uh, may we listen to this short song so we can remember whenever we, we fall and sometimes we, we think that we're condemned. Let us always remember this promise. Thank you, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Thank you, Brother Rene, for your inspirational message. But before we transition to our Sabbath school lesson, let's uh, close with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we have enjoyed spending time in your presence. Thank you for creating us and giving us the freedom of choice. And with your guidance, we pray that we can discern what's right and choose the right path. May your grace and love be with us each day and help us to love others the way you love us, to love unconditionally. Please bless and guide our Sabbath school teacher, Malcolm, this morning as he leads our Sabbath school lesson. Grant him wisdom and fill him with the peace of God that passes understanding. Let's open our eyes and our hearts to understand your word and to grow spiritually so that we can share your word to others and bring more people to your kingdom. Forgive us, Lord, for whatever sins we have done, and we continue to praise you and worship you for this Sabbath day, and not just today, but every day. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.